Hi everyone, welcome to the November edition of Wavelength. At the October board meeting, directors passed a resolution which will directly affect the future course of this company. The resolution authorizes the general manager to seek legislative approval for the LCRA to become a statewide provider of transmission services. For the past six months now, we've had a group looking at our future direction in the energy business and how we fit into the new electric industry that is developing in Texas. Uh, that process we call the Genesis Project and uh, things will be different going forward if we are able to realize uh, our, our goals. We see the LCRA stepping forward and becoming a major provider of transmission services on a statewide basis. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised over the next decade to see LCRA grow into being really the, the number one provider of transmission services in the state of Texas. That will be different. On the generation side, it's really quite the opposite. We don't see our role in generation growing going forward. It's not that we're not good at uh, providing generation services. It really comes from the fact that our customers wouldn't sign and couldn't sign long-term contract with us for new generation uh, if we're that we were to offer them. So it's not that LCRA has decided to uh, not do any more generation. It's really that uh, there's a lot more generation resources out there available to our customers and we're not going to be able to build in the future like we've built in the past. We're not proposing to sell our current generation. Our current generation, our Fayette power plant, our gas plants, are very valuable, just as our hydro is valuable to us. So what we're really talking about is holding on to what we have, getting the debt paid off on our generation plants, and we may have old plants that we're selling power out of in the future, but without debt, we will be able to be very competitive. That's why I say that we will develop a process that we will sit down with our customers and redefine. We're not going to go away, and we're not going to tear up our contracts, quite frankly. But we do need to sit down and say, okay, how are we going to get our future generation? What is the most economical thing for us to do? What role do the customers want to play in this new market? Are the customers going to be the power marketers? How are the customers going to retail market and respond to the changes in the retail market? What role do we play? Do our customers want to build some of the generation and us manage it for us? You know, it, it, it's a talk about the future and it shapes everything that we do within Genco. And I think that's the right way to approach it rather than LCRA just saying, well, here it is. Here's how we're going to do generation. Take it or leave it. Here it is. Here's how we're going to do, you know, conservation or vision energy or power marketing. Here it is. You know, solved all your problems. Take it or leave it. And see, we're going to say, no, we need to all get in the room together and take the next six to eight months and see if we don't have a better way to do this. Um, and that, I think, is very exciting. And I think we're in great shape in our relationship with our customers to sit down and uh, you know, out of these problems, I think, will come a lot of creativity and a, and a good way for us to utilize our assets and a, and a stronger way for our customers to, to get their generation resources in the future. I know that that's, this whole process is going to get some folks a little bit nervous, and I, I understand that. But uh, we've got to clearly articulate what our services are going to be and uh, get about the business of, of making all that happen. And we have to look at the whole picture and look long term uh, in order for us to be able, frankly, to uh, survive as an organization. If you're in Genco, a, a word that I would have to all the employees in Genco, uh, you should not look at this decision as a negative decision at all. You know, one of the best cultures that we have in this organization is our hydro culture. And we haven't added a, a, a megawatt of new hydro facility power. We've, you know, we've increased some capacity, but we've basically had the same facilities now for over 60 years. Um, so just because we say we may not go out and invest a billion dollars to build a new coal plant doesn't mean we might not operate a plant that somebody else owned. doesn't mean that somebody else may not come in and work with us in a partnership to repower our units. 
It simply means we're not going to go out and risk a billion or 500 million or 100 million dollars worth of debt on uh, services that we might not get paid back for. So what we're really doing is, is providing a way for your future to be more secure and for you to have a great place to work, to live in a great part of Texas and an organization knows exactly what its product is, exactly what it costs and has a way to sell it into the market. Uh, our 2,500 megawatts of power is going to be sold in this new market. I'm convinced of that, particularly as, uh, as other utilities decide not to build generation. There will be some personnel changes just right away as we, as we set about the business of implementing this plan. Uh, Jim Briley uh, is the interim uh, manager of the Tensco organization, the, the wires company. We've got 60 years of history of uh, designing, building, and operating transmission systems and a lot of capable people uh, to get us, get us where we think we want to go. So the Genesis project really, while it started as a generation uh, exercise, it really came with a broader focus for LCRA and where LCRA needs to be in the future. Bill Freeman is going to uh, step back and work with me on a corporate level and manage the uh, overall uh, transition of uh, setting up the statewide Tensco and reshaping Genco and seeing what functions within the organization we keep and what functions we see if our customers want to do. I think in the long run it's going to be a very good thing. It's going to make for a stronger LCRA and a more focused LCRA. It's going to mean that there are some things that they're going to have to be a little more in control of their destiny. They're going to have a little more of a role in trying to decide how much of certain services they want and how they want to pay for those, some of the demand side or conservation services. Uh, generation, they're going to have to figure out what's that partnership they want to have with LCRA. But longer term, LCRA will be a stronger entity for them to work with because hopefully we'll be riding to a much stronger customer base throughout Texas. Dudley uh, is and will remain uh, the head of Genco. Uh, no, we're not divesting our generation assets. We're proud of our generation assets. They do great. Uh, we've got some great folks maintaining and operating those assets. And we're keeping those things economic. That's going to be our biggest challenge in the future is to make sure that we can be competitive with the market so that our customers can keep their customers. I think it's um, a very proactive and positive reaction to deregulation. It's really probably the best alternative for LCRA moving into that future environment. Um, it, de it, it changes our emphasis in the electric business. Uh, and changes, well, I guess refocuses our emphasis in the services that we provide and really, you know, focusing on the public service aspect of it. From a business services perspective, what that means is we need to evaluate the services we provide that support the generation company and the transmission company and realign those services to make sure we are providing what they need to move forward, especially with the change in emphasis. So. I think it, it will have some impact on us. I think it'll be real positive, and we're just excited about it, very excited. I think this gives LCRA the opportunity to do what we do best, the strategy outlines that will continue with generation. That's something that we are absolutely excellent at. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to continue with our transmission and the possibility of expanding that service beyond our service area, which I think is a great opportunity because that's something that we do equally well. In addition to that, it affords us the opportunity to continue with community services and water and wastewater. Uh, I, I don't see how we can lose with this strategy. I think it positions us in a deregulated uh, market very, very well. In summary, these are important changes. Uh, I'm I'm very excited as about us having the opportunity to ask the legislature for approval to be a statewide provider of transmission services. I believe we can do that better than anybody in this country. And I think that is a first class role for the LCRA to play. It's service based and it has us being the folks that help keep the lights on for 17 million people in Texas. And I'm convinced that it's going to be very difficult for the investor-owned utilities to 
own all their generation and have these huge companies and at the same time control the transmission system. So I look forward to us being able to form partnerships with those folks, not trying to steal their lines, but to form, I think we've got a good product that we can take to them and say, hey, this makes sense. This is a better way to do this. And I think that is a tremendous role for the LCRA to play and one that we can do, as I said a minute ago, better than anybody else in this country. And I think that we can survive and thrive with our generating resources. For us to be a river authority who owns 2,500 megawatts of uh, low cost uh, hydro and natural gas and coal power, uh, not a bad place to be. And uh, we'll sell that power. I think most of it will be absorbed by our customers for generations to come. But I think if for some reason our customers uh, don't need all that load or don't want all that load, uh, I'm convinced we'd be able to sell that amount of power on the open market. So uh, I see a river authority with a very useful purpose in economic development, community services, recreation, and having the resources to do that by being the predominant transmission provider in the state of Texas and having uh, 2,500 megawatts of uh, low cost, uh, efficient power to sell into the grid in Texas. And uh, to me, that's not a bad vision of the LCRA uh, going forward. I think that plan keeps us as one of the premier uh, river authorities and uh, public service organizations in this country. And uh, I accept the goal of no less than that. Here's an equation that doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. If a power plant generates electricity for people to use and that same power plant burns coal to make the electricity and the coal that the power plant burns comes by train from somewhere far away, then what happens if the train system breaks down? Well, you probably guessed it. No coal, no electricity. Unfortunately, that equation isn't hypothetical. It's a reality at the Fayette Power Project where coal supplies have been cut in half due to problems with the Union Pacific Railroad. You know, as the old cliche goes, this ain't no way to run a railroad. It, it's really pretty ridiculous. And uh, it's, it's everything bad about, you know, merger mania and, and trying to build these big companies. And, and literally, Union Pacific just hasn't managed the merger well. And apparently they've laid off too many people and crews and, and it's pretty royally messed up their business and they've backed up trains how, you know, through half across America. The Fayette Power Project normally receives two train loads of coal a day, and it burns about 1.8 train loads per day. Typically, the plant has a 60-day supply on hand at all times, but the railroad delays have eaten away much of that. Last month, uh, and actually in August, September, we were receiving about three quarters of, of a train per day on average. Uh, things have improved slightly. Uh, the Union Pacific has instituted their service uh, recovery plan. We're now seeing on the average of about one train a day. Uh, it's an improvement, but it's not where we need to be. And we're matching the deliveries, looking at the deliveries and matching our generation take out of that. And taking quite a bit less than we normally do. We may have a coal unit down for a good part of the winter. Union Pacific's problems have already had a dramatic impact on the LCRA. The Fayette Power Project has implemented a coal conservation program, which is a combination of reducing their output while increasing production at the Sim Gideon gas-fired plant. At the same time, the LCRA is buying power from other sources, all in an effort to save what little coal there is for the cold days ahead. Electricity generated at the Fayette Power Project is among the cheapest in the state. And without coal to generate power, it could force the LCRA to raise rates. It's not expected that our customers are going to see an immediate uh, rate impact, but it's, a, it's really a function of how long this crisis lasts. Uh, if, if things continue to improve as, as we see here in the near term and eventually get back to normal, uh, I think the, the impacts, if any, will be pretty uh, minimal. However, if this turns out to be a sustained event, six months or greater, the impacts could be much larger. Fortunately, the mild weather has allowed LCRA to meet most of its generation needs. But if the cold weather comes before the coal, the LCRA and Union Pacific could be in for a head-on collision.
The dam modernization project here at Wirtz has reached a major milestone. What used to be the earthen section of the dam is now completely covered with these stairs made of soil cement. It took 175,000 cubic yards of soil cement to complete the job. Now the focus has shifted to the downstream bank where a foot thick layer of soil cement is being applied to prevent erosion during periods of heavy floodgate operations. This area will also have a parking lot and ramp down to the river for public access for fishing. Repair work on the hole below Wurtz by HP Zachary Company is on schedule. The hole has been filled with concrete and the coffer dam has been erected. It's a seven foot tall concrete coffer dam and that'll keep the, uh, when the uh, Wurtz generates, it'll keep the water from coming into the work area. The water level comes up about five feet and uh, so this will prevent that water from coming into the work area. It'll allow us to uh, start our anchoring program. Some four to five hundred of these steel anchors will be drilled through the concrete and 15 feet down into the granite to stitch them together and add strength to the patch. Does this dam look familiar? Well, it should. It's a scale model of works built at Utah State University to study the hydraulics and erosion characteristics of the area below the dam. The final solution to the repair work is to construct a slab five foot thick that extends from gate six all the way through gate number 10. What this allowed us to do was change up the hydraulics or the flow of the water downstream of Wurtz Dam in order to minimize the erosion that's going to take place should these gates all be opened again in the future. The anchor should be complete by the end of November, at which time the slab construction will begin. The Highland Lakes of Central Texas are a mecca for water sports of all kinds. Fishermen, sailors, divers, skiers use the lake and Colorado River year round. But all of this activity puts a tremendous strain on public safety officials who are responsible for patrolling these lakes. It is a training session, so we're going to play safety primary. That's why the LCRA Rangers, Burnett County Sheriff's Department, and Granite Shoals EMS have come together for an underwater search and rescue training session. We've got five major lakes in our county, or joining our county, and uh, LCRA, uh, they're here with us. They've been helping us out for the past two years. Uh, we give us a boat to refurbish and have a, a boat patrolled out here, and also the rescue portion of it. And right now, we've got a good dive team and search and recovery team that we don't have enough personnel to go around nor the equipment. LCRA is basically the same boat, so we combine efforts, and uh, we have a double size of the team and double size amount of equipment. We've got more cooperation, and we can provide the service to the community like we need to do. There are some real benefits when you have people that go out and train together, and then when they have a serious incident come up, they know each other on a first name basis, they know what their skill levels are, and they can go right to work. The scenario is, we had a call yesterday, there were people out here having a party of some type, there was a commotion, everybody disappeared. We came in this morning, there's a boat floating on the water, so we don't know if anyone's out there, we don't know what's going on until we get out there and search. But before divers could search the capsized boat, ping pong balls were spotted on the surface, a diver distress signal. We have a diver down emergency. Brenda, rescue gear, get in the water. The search drill quickly became a rescue operation as divers and EMS personnel swing into action. Was his regulator in his mouth or out of his mouth? Was his mask off or on? Those are all little clues that are going to help the medical folks because some event happened down there, whether it was an embolism and I just faded away, whether it was an equipment malfunction and you know I'm struggling with equipment to get something to work and it doesn't and now I'm just hanging there. Just food for thought. Take a mental picture. After successfully handling this emergency, dive teams went back to complete the search mission. The Rangers also brought along their newest team member on this training session. This is Pumpkin. This is our new search and rescue dog. She's only eight months old and she already weighs 90 pounds. Pumpkin is a bloodhound and she was donated to the LCRA Rangers by Travis County Search and Rescue. 
and they will assist in her training to search for escapees and missing persons. Well, that's it for this edition of Wavelength. We'll look forward to seeing you again next time.